Chess Diagnostic. Hello everybody and welcome to Chess Diagnostic. This is Andrew. We are on day 20 of 28 Days to Better Chess Tactics. So in this lesson, we're going to look at demolition of pawn structure. I'm just going to give two examples because uh, it seems that people are enjoying shorter lessons with fewer examples but with more depth. And this first example position is quite incredible. If you want to pause the video, you can now. But it's black to move, and in this position, you can notice that black has two bishops that are pressuring along the queen side, and white is quite passive with these pieces, his two rooks and bishop not really doing anything, and his queen sitting on the first rank, just trying to hold the queen side down. So if we want to look at the forcing moves, you can see that, well, the rook can be taken by the b-pawn, and we also have b4, and the bishops are quite active already. So if we look at b4, we can see that the rook can be captured, but then we can take and open up the queen side even further. So at this point, we're threatening queen to b4 check, which will open the diagonal, and then we could even check maybe with a pawn. And that's, that's actually what happened in the game after rook to d3, black played queen to b4, and white tried to put up some resistance, but he ended up getting checkmated with a pawn. I'll show you here. So if the pawn takes, then actually it's just a2 checkmate. So if we go back to b4, after pawn takes, there's actually a strong defense by the computer, but it's still lost by white. So rook to d5, cutting off the bishop. Now, black is down so much material that this makes logical sense, but the amazing thing is, even though after we take and we're down a rook, that black is still won. And it's because of the activity of the bishop and the queen and white's inactive pieces and weak, weak uh, queen side. So we play a2. We even queen the pawn, and this line is quite hard to calculate because it's not very logical, um, but pretty much we're just attacking with the only pieces we have left, and we have some mate threats. So the queen has to stay here, otherwise we'd check and mate. For example, if he took this pawn, check, mate, But we actually play queen to d2, and now we threaten mate here. So white is forced to bring the pawn up, but we just keep infiltrating. Now we're threatening mate here, and he has to bring the bishop back. Queen takes, and now we've won our material, and we're up two pawns. So if the bishop, instead of going back and allowing this fork, what if he plays bishop to d3? Now this line wasn't analyzed from the game, but I was analyzing it, and even then, we're able to take this rook, but the computer actually is suggesting to keep checking, taking the bishop, and picking up these pawns, because the rook still remains inactive, and our bishop is actually worth more than this rook. And now we have, we, we have the possibility of having a lot of passed pawns, and it's minus 3.1 at this point, We'll pick up probably some more of these weak pawns and possibly even start a mating threat again. All right, so this was position one. And if we summarize it, we can see that demolition of pawn structure is accomplished in multiple ways. First, by sacrificing a rook and then by using our past pawns and bishops to increase our activity. All right, we'll move on to position two. All right, so in position two, it is white to move, and you can pause the video now. Just keep in mind that you're looking for demolition of a pawn structure. All right, so in this position, the only logical moves really are knight to f5 and knight takes e6. So if we look at the black side, you can see that black's king is uncastled, and 
this rook's completely inactive, and he has this mass of pieces completely inactive. So, of course, we can use that to our advantage with knight takes e6, and then we'll stack on with another piece. Now, notice that the pawn can't move forward because we'll just take the queen, so it's actually pinned as well uh, on the diagonal as well as on the e-file. So after we bring the bishop in, there's only two possible moves. Either the queen moves or the bishop comes. Because if black castles, then we fork the king and the queen with a check. And so black chose uh, bishop to e7. Trying to close off the e-file using his bishop instead of a pawn because he doesn't have any pawn cover anymore. After queen to c6, we'd like to take this pawn with a check. So the next logical move, if you didn't find it, is bishop to g5, bringing another piece into the game and trying to deflect the bishop away from the e-file so that we can play bishop takes d5 check. So this is a very logical move and it's actually very crushing because if black, for example, moves his king, we just take the bishop anyway, and we still get the check. And black's king is stuck in the center because this bishop is cutting all the squares. He even can't just simply try to develop a piece because then we'd take the piece anyway. And now we're really threatening a lot. So if we go back to the beginning of this position, you could see that with the structures of black's position, you should immediately look on how you can destroy his pawn cover to take advantage of his inactivity. And this is a central, th a central theme behind all tactics, pretty much. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.